you can now get your checkup in the car. Technology is heading that way, and it's called the biometric car. Joe White is joining us right now. He's our Eyes on the Road columnist, and we also have Brian Reimer. He is at MIT's Age Lab. Thanks for being with us. Joe, describe how these yep. new cars and this new technology is different from what we've seen in the past with technology that might just sort of note if you're sleepy when you drive or possibly cars that could tell if you're intoxicated when you're driving. This is something new and another step forward. Now, th yes, and this is this stuff is still experimental. You can't buy a car with a biometric monitor, at least not yet. But the idea is is to have a car that with sensors embedded in it, maybe in the seat belt, maybe in the seat, maybe on the dashboard, uh, or in the steering wheel that that can read um, the, the levels of stress, uh, the levels of stress in your body, your heart rate, your breathing rate, uh, the sweatiness of your palms, and use that information. Um, to manage what the car is doing. Maybe, and this is a theoretical example, um, if it senses that you're stressed and there's a lot going on around you, maybe the car could shut down the phone or shut down the multimedia system. Mm -hmm. uh, another idea would be a, a car that could sense if you're having, um, say, a heart attack or some sort of, uh, some sort of breathing problem and, and, and perhaps act to slow the car or even stop the car. I mean, these are the kinds of things that car companies are researching now, and it's all aimed at, at, at more mainly aimed at the goal of, of accident right. prevention and accident avoidance. Let's bring Brian in here. Brian, now over at MIT, you've been doing some research on this with Toyota, Ford, other companies. What is the, why is the demand there? Is this because of our, or po possibly there? Is that because we have an aging population? What do you think the target audience for this is going to be? The demand's there for a number of reasons. Uh, we've been actually looking at the use of uh, biometrics or physiological measures in, in both uh, technology assessment in the vehicle and, and workload management in the vehicle. So how can we really help drivers in a very safe way make more strategic and better decisions while on the roadway? And as we look at, at the advancing automotive interface, um, the aging population, the amount of information that we're trying to juggle um, while we drive down the road is getting quite complex. So how do we really help drivers um, strategically and in productive ways make better decisions? Is that to forgo the phone call at some point in right. time to focus on driving? Or is that to use automation and allow automation to make better functional decisions on when the driver needs help and needs assistance? So, so Joe, then this uh, technology obviously is still very much in a developmental stage. Um, Brian's saying, you know, that there he sees real, real possibility for sincere demand down the road. What about privacy concerns about um, for this, though? I could see, you know, drivers saying it's one thing to know if I'm sleepy. It's another thing for you to be mon monitoring my glucose level, my heart level, shutting down my phone. Uh, lots of hurdles that might be here. Yeah, I, 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 and I talked to a couple of people about this, and I do think that, that, that you're going to probably what you'll see is that these will be opt-in sorts of technology. In other words, people will want to control what's going on here, um, control if the, if the car is, is monitoring some vital sign, certainly control where that information is going. Uh, folks at Ford I talked to are particularly concerned um, about this and, and suggested that, 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 that in a system that they might produce, uh, they would probably make it so that the car isn't storing, isn't storing information or certainly not storing information um, at all without your consent because you, know, you can do a lot of nightmare scenarios, but here's one. Uh, you have an accident, um, the car has stored information about your physiological state that could be used against you in, in some sort of a lawsuit. That's not what people want. And I think there's going to have to be a lot of thought put into how to manage that appropriately and how to give customers control. Very interesting. Brian, last word here. What do you think about some of these criticisms of the technology? Do you see it becoming more of just a, a niche product in certain markets, or do you think you can overcome that? No, I think you can really overcome that quite quite well. If we look at credit cards, for example, we're all willing to give away elements of privacy, where I shop, when I shop, what I buy, for the convenience factor. Now, as long as we can develop systems that really do enhance driver safety in productive ways that the driver is fully aware of and fully understanding, the driver is going to be willing to give up some of that privacy. Now. I do believe the driver needs to maintain control of that information, and we're going to have to put a lot of thought in beyond the vehicle of how do we control biometric and other sensing information about our lives. Um, the car is just one place that this is, this is really growing in. We can see the smartphone technologies really taking off many other applications in the world, very similar privacy concerns. My car is my doctor, driverless cars, driving is just never going to be the same again. All right, guys, thanks so much for being with us. Brian Reimer, he is at MIT. Joe White, he writes Eyes on the Road. We'll have more on that in the Personal Journal section tomorrow.